Welcome to the Mystery College Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Nanad Tallerman. He ha he's gone through every spirit through the Zone Girdling Earth and among many, many other accomplishments. Uh, I'm really excited to have him on. I've, I've followed him closely over a decade now. And so it's, it's a real honor to have him on the show. Welcome, Nanad. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, we've been annoying each other for a long time, and this is uh, really fantastic that we can finally see each other like this. Yeah, hopefully okay. one day also meet. If Absolutely, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to be your uh, a ghost, a, a guest. Absolutely, <laughs> thank you. And not a ghost quite yet. No, it's not yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of ghosts, though, you, you do have um, you have like a cool, like a novel or um, like a like a, a biographical series, like a on um, Sh Shanghai ghosts or, or. Ah, oh, this is something new. This is something new. And, uh, I'm happy to say that I think that I fi just finished my first draft. Mm. It is, uh, a, a, a really, uh, like an uh, old story. Anyway, uh, 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 okay. I can start with this. Uh, it was something like, uh, eight or nine years ago. Uh, me and a very, very good American friend of mine. Her name is uh, Tess Johnson. At that time, she was uh, 85 years old, but she is uh, my good friend. So two of us, because uh, both of us uh, at that time we were living in Shanghai, decided uh, to write a book about Americans in Shanghai. She, she's an American. And so we started writing this book and uh, after like uh, six months of writing and uh, researching, exploring and so on, unfortunately, she said uh, that uh, she uh, g g g uh, would give up you know, the, the, with this book. So I had uh, like uh, written the whole book, but uh, now at that moment, uh, I didn't know what to do with it. So, so I left it as it is and said, okay, probably I will never publish this book. Okay. But then I realized, why couldn't I maybe make a novel? So uh, I mixed, uh, so to say, this historical book uh, with this with with, uh, with this uh, uh, spiritual topics, and uh, those spiritual topics. So I hope I managed to make a, a novel about the spirits of old Shanghai. Uh, it is, uh, so to say, uh, historically speaking. I think that uh, I did my best to research it objectively and. Uh, uh, Sina era at studio, how it is said uh, in uh, old Latin, uh, and uh, uh, that most of those uh, uh, things uh, uh, which I said about Old Shanghai historically are correct. I also hope on the other side that uh, uh, most of the things I said about the spiritual world is also uh, correct. Uh, uh, I wrote this book in um, I form, like uh, that I was, uh, uh, so to say, uh, main uh, uh, character of this book, uh, but this main character uh, is actu uh, actually died uh, one year ago, and now wherever he lives, uh, and this is a place somewhere in the Earth Zone, uh, and uh, his boss is one of the uh, 360, 360 uh, cats of the Earth Zone, and his name is Yamai, he's his boss, and now his boss gave me, or that main character, uh, the task to write a book about uh, Old Shanghai. So now while I'm writing this book, I'm also meeting all of those ghosts and spirits and uh, go through different kinds of adventures and so on. So this is uh, the, the book I wrote about, uh, and uh, I, I don't know, I hope uh, uh, people would like it, and that's it. So, But I wrote another uh, book, uh, similar book, uh, uh, it's called, uh, it, it is about a man who committed suicide and, uh, this book, uh, uh, is about, uh, all troubles, uh, he went through, uh, since the time, uh, uh he committed suicide. And, uh, in that book, uh, the main, uh, hero is, uh, the head, uh, Lotifar, because Lotifar guards people, those people, he's a guardian of those people. Uh, who committed uh, suicide. At, uh, but uh, most of the time, most of this book uh, uh, about this uh, suicide is uh, in limbo, in limbo. So the place which is uh, uh, hell, but uh, let's say higher higher level of hell, the highest possible level of hell, <laughs> but still terrible. 
Okay. That, that's uh, those are two novels that uh, I'm. Uh, I, I think uh, I've just finished. Mm. So uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that in a few days I'm going to uh, send uh, uh, the, uh, those two books, or or, or, or at least the spirit of Shang or in all Shanghai, I'll send it to to uh, my uh, current uh, publisher and my great friend uh, uh, Tanya Robinson. Mm. And uh, let's see. After that, uh, we'll see how to proceed. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really, really exciting. And it's awesome to hear how it was written in, in the, with the eye in mind. It was written with a lot of anecdotal experiences. And, and as someone who's practiced in meditation, magic, spiritual arts, a, a lot of the information you can validate or, or go straight to the source, which, uh, which kind of, you know, oftentimes when people are creating novels, they're, they're channeling, but you're like, you're, you're, you took that several steps further. <laughs> like, I, you're, like, you're really channeling and really yeah, totally honest, uh, uh, with you. And, uh, uh, I, uh, it was very difficult for me to start writing novels. This is something the most difficult I ever tried, uh, in, um, at, at writing. Uh, I, uh, it's really difficult because I wrote several books, published several books before. Some of them are historical books about all Shanghai, actually. Uh, then I, okay. I wrote also, uh, those magical books about the earth zone and moon zone. Uh, don't say it's easy, it's difficult, very difficult, but very, uh, very challenging. Uh, I also wrote some, uh, poems, uh, uh, because, uh, I, uh, uh, I also like poetry and uh, I also get my band, uh, uh, Bad Treatment. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so I, I had, so to say, writing experience about different genres of writing. But when I started, and it was uh, really 15 years ago, when I tried to write a novel, it was extremely, extremely difficult. Now I think it's easier, much easier, but it's because I've been trying for 15 years. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think many people have explored as many writing genres between poetry, lyrics, or or you know, like playing in a band, and then also fiction, nonfiction, and then also and then spiritual ph philosophy. Like you, you kind of hit, hit you simultaneously hit all genres and all sort of scopes of uh, writing almost. Okay, thank you very much. But you know, I'm not very talented. If I achieved something, it's due to hard work, I think. Mm. That makes it all the more meaningful, too. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm curious about, like, um, some of your experiences, like, an anecdotally, like, uh, with the spirit realm in, in, in relation to, like, some of the countries you visit. The, my experience, my personal experience when I've traveled through, uh, Asia, Southeast Asia or, or different continents is uh, like in certain cities or certain regions, sometimes the veil between worlds is a bit thinner and there's more intersectionality between uh, different types of beings. Um, you know, so I'm wondering what, if you have any, like, you know, if, if you find any differences between different cultures or places that you've been. Okay, you see, uh, it's uh, interesting that you asked me this, and uh, yeah, because uh, I just came back uh, uh, with my family from a holiday we spent in uh, Cambodia, and it was really a, a wonderful trip, a wonderful time. Uh, I mean, uh, we visited several places, uh, Phnom Penh, which is the capital, but also Angkor Wat, uh, this area with many uh, temples, a uh, place where really... Uh, jungle meets uh, temples and uh, you can feel uh, that uh, something really amazing is happening there. I have never seen anything like that uh, uh, before in my life. Uh, so this Angkor Wat uh, is one of many temples there, but it is the largest in the world, the, probably the largest that have ever been built uh, in history. Uh, and uh, it, represent, it, it, it represents the Mount Maru, which is the highest mountain uh, in the world, I mean, uh, in the in the Earth zone, uh, in our reality, this reality, physical reality, it's Mount Everest, right? 
but uh, it's really not, uh, you know, it's Mount Maru. And uh, this temple, Angkor Wat, represents Mount Maru. So you start uh, climbing up from the beginning up to the top. And when I finally reached the top, uh, I sat there and prayed to uh, Vishnu. Vishnu, because this is dedicated, this temple is dedicated to Vishnu uh, at first. But later on, uh, we have, uh, there, there, there have been uh, many uh, Buddhist influences as well. But I prayed to Vishnu and then I was asking myself, okay, I'm sure that I, somebody guided me here, but I was not really com completely sure who it was. There are several cats of the earth zone and maybe Mercury angels, uh, but uh, I was not really sure. This is somebody like really helped me come there. Uh, for example, uh, Yamaik could have be one of them. And this Yamaik is uh, the... Uh, one of the main heroes from this book, uh, sp uh, 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 I, I've just mentioned him, Spirits of Shanghai. He is like a history teacher, but more like a history teacher of, uh, uh, but he's more concerned about uh, history of religion and spiritualism and so on. Maybe he, but maybe not. I don't know. Was not sure. And then uh, uh, I thought that it could be Argaro. And this Argaro, this is this cat is also uh, the the guardian of many temples uh, in the world, uh, and uh, many priests. Uh, but uh, I, I sensed that it was not him either. So I was thinking and meditating, and finally I read my own book about uh, what I wrote. Uh, this uh, book about uh, 360 heads of the Earth Zone, and then I finally found finally found out that it was uh, Algabil. Because this head uh, uh, was totally spot on as uh, he uh, guides uh, people to climb uh, high mountains, uh, high temples. Uh, I also mentioned there uh, Mount Maru. I meditated and said, okay, that's him. That must be him. Definitely him. And it's interesting because uh, uh, sometimes... Uh, uh, you know that you are influenced by some of those heads, but sometimes you have no idea, and then only later then you uh, do you you understand that uh, it was actually uh, who was actually guiding you and protecting you and so on. So this was one experience in Cambodia. And by the way, have you been there? Yeah, yeah, I spent many months in Cambodia. Yeah, and how did you like it? Um. I spent most of my time in Phnom Penh, which was probably a mistake. I probably should have spent more time in the countryside. Um, but I remember when I was in Siem Reap, uh, like, uh, you know, like, there's absolutely like really phenomenal energies there. And I also felt like a lot of heaviness from, from kind of like, there's just some trauma that I felt in the air. Um, and, and late, late, and that was before I even knew about the Khmer Rouge and that I, I didn't, I didn't research up on it before, but I just, I really picked up on that. I was, I was a bit disturbed. Yeah, you can feel it in the air. Still, you can feel it in the air. Definitely that uh, something extremely bad uh, happened uh, with Khmer Rouge, uh, with gen genocide, so many people killed. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's unbelievable because I think that uh, those uh, uh, Cambodians are really uh, maybe the kindest people I have ever seen in my life. They're very kind, they're very spiritual, they're very nice. And among that nation that you can find such terrible evil people, this is absolutely amazing. It's really like a battle between the good and the evil. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, that evil uh, uh, was winning there for a few years. Yeah. And, uh, for which reason, I uh, uh, think uh, one third of population, or maybe one fourth of one third of population, something like that, yeah. were killed, yes, or died starve to death and so on yeah that's uh, really tough really tough and um yeah and i guess as, as someone who's sensitive too like you know you have to you can only you can't tune into it too much you got to kind of let it be to some degree but you know send your prayers you know assist things as it comes up but in the meantime, you're there. We're there to enjoy our time and vacation. Yeah, sure. okay. we're helping in, our, in that way too. Um, I'm curious what what initially got you started on the track towards uh, meditation, mindfulness, spirituality. Um, 
And then also, and then especially like your strong inclination towards Bardenism, Hermetics. Yeah, it's, uh, I think, a long story. But I can start uh, with uh, slowly, step by step. Uh, I was uh, uh, 14 uh, years old when uh, I moved to Sweden, Stockholm. And uh, so I lived there as a teenager. And I don't know, somehow I felt that uh, I, I missed something in my life uh, when I was a teenager. Like, I went to a foreign book sh uh, to, 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 to a book, book, book shop. And there I found a book about uh, uh, the astral, uh, about astral projection. It's an, it was really a nice book, uh, amazing book, which helped me a lot. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, later on, I lost it. And even, even more amazingly, I, I really forgot uh, uh, the authors of those of that book. It was uh, like uh, a man, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, husband and wife. They, they, they are uh, the marriage couple. They, they wrote it together. Tried to Google it, couldn't find, and this book is forgotten. But I hope one day I, 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 I will, so to say, remember uh, that book. I mean, uh, remember the title, The Yotas, again. Anyway, uh, it was a very nice book uh, and uh, uh, with uh, practices, with uh, lessons and so on. Something like uh, Franz Bardon. Yeah? But... Uh, uh, so I practiced, practiced a lot for a few, like uh, for, for three years, astral projection, according to this book. And uh, I was very stubborn and uh, very persistent to, to achieve this astral projection. Uh, my only guide was that book, but it was in uh, 1986, 1987 at that time. Really, it was not easy to obtain any uh, uh, information or to meet people, uh, to, especially not to meet a master, especially not in Sweden, because uh, uh, I was, uh, so to say, a kid. Uh, it was a foreign country. So I really couldn't, couldn't do anything else but to follow uh, his, the instruction from that book. And, and amazingly, one day when I was 17 years old, I achieved this astral projection. And uh, yes, this was the beginning. So... Probably uh, now when I think about that and I think about that time often, I think that uh, uh, I had some uh, fear of death at that time when I was a kid. So my uh, uh, goal with the astral projection is to see if uh, there is really life after death or is the death real and so on. So when I achieved this astral projection, I said to myself, okay, now if I, if, if I am to believe myself uh, and... Uh, at the end, why not? Uh, I mean, this is my experience after all. Then uh, I think that there is a life after that, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, death me doesn't mean the end. So I was quite satisfied with uh, this uh, discovery. Uh, however, it was not somehow enough, and this was I, I was more and more curious about uh, uh, this other world. Uh, about other, uh, I realized and noticed there are many different uh, worlds, reality, different parallel universes. Uh, and then I also asked myself one day uh, how I can connect this, what's happening over there with uh, the things uh, happening to me in this life. Uh, so probably when you ask these kind of questions, uh, how those two things are connected, that you become a, a magician, so to say. Before the, the, that, maybe you're some kind of an enthusiast trying to figure out something, okay, but when you start asking you this question, how to connect this life with that which is over there, then probably you start being a magician. But I was still young, and uh, uh, but I was curious, uh, read a lot, uh, read a lot, never gave up, uh, so uh, I uh, started reading uh, more and more serious books about Hermitism, of Kabbalah, and uh, starting experimenting with the Tree of Life, uh, different spheres, different Sephiroth. Uh, uh, over the years, I became very uh, uh, fascinated with the uh, Enochian magic. Uh, uh, in 2012, I became the, uh, the member of this studio Arcanis, yes. Well, in which I met many interesting people, 
But before that, uh, I had uh, my first uh, master. His name is Tom DeLiso. He, I think that he's also from California, like you are, really. The Tom DeLiso, and uh, he, uh, I contacted him uh, for the first time, I think, um, something like uh, 17 years ago. And uh, he was very kind to me, and uh, we had uh, 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 frequent uh, communication on uh, internet, uh, emails, and so on. So he, he gave me instructions about uh, how to, uh, about the best ways uh, to uh, 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 explore with my spirit uh, uh, the tree of life and the different ethers and so on. But then uh, it was uh, something like uh, at, at that time, which means really probably 17 years ago or something like that. Uh, I became interested with uh, with uh, uh, Franz Bardon, so this is my uh, the start of my story with uh, Franz Bardon. Yes, wonderful, wonderful, and, and then um, yeah, so it sounds like you had a pretty massive journey from your time being in in Sw in Sweden, Stockholm, and then and then having this book. You're 14 years old, but even even to this day, even though it was highly influential, it's like oh. I'm not quite sure what the title was or the author, but maybe it's just not meant to be recovered. <laughs> Amazing, because really I'm very careful about such details. Uh, you know, like uh, why I'm writing his history books, it's because I am actually uh, by profession a historian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, and uh, I really take care about my sources, but about all kinds of sources. And this was one of the most uh, influential book I've ever read in my life, but forgot the title. Amazing. This is magic too, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's its own magic, its own glamour. Yeah. Um, and, and one thing that really peeked out to me too is after you'd, you'd, you've had ex exploration to different planes of existence of neurality, um, like at that age and, and until now even, and, and that's also reflected in, in one, some of the major types of work that you've done as a uh, working at different consulates in, in different countries. So I'm wondering if, you, if you're open to sharing... Uh, and reflecting on your ex experience working at different consulates, and then also your in your in your spiritual practice, and that intersection between exploring different realms, you know, uh, above and below, so to speak, <laughs> above and below. Yeah. Oh yes. But uh, so uh, in the nineteen ninety seven, I started working with the ministry of, uh, for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In Belgrade, uh, and my first post abroad was in 2000. So I went uh, to Pyongyang as a young diplomat, and uh, it was an um, an amazing place to be uh, because uh, I had uh, many uh, great foreign friends there. We all lived uh, like uh, in a so to say consular or diplomatic ghetto. There were many, it, but it was a nice part, the best part of Pyongyang. Where we lived in, uh, all embassies and the humanitarian ag agencies uh, uh, were uh, there, located there, in this uh, part of Pyongyang, and uh, had, so to say, I, mean, I already said that the great friends had great time together. We, uh, we uh, since I was a young diplomat, I didn't uh, meet uh, very high uh, uh, North Korean officials. I just met uh, like uh, uh, the officials who were on the same level as I was, or a little bit higher. Or a little bit lower, something like that, and uh, all of those uh, North Korean officials, uh, uh, which helped us with our diplomatic work uh, and so on, they were really great people. Uh, I have uh, so I really and all of those people you can see on the street, uh, uh, North Koreans. They were also great people. So you know, my experience was really nice with both foreigners and North Koreans. Uh, talking about those high rank. Uh, uh, North Korean dignitaries, I, uh, I, I, I never met him, met them, so I, I cannot say anything about that by personal experience. Anyway, uh, you know, this was a very interesting country for me, you know, for, uh, for spiritual reasons as well, because uh, 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 there is really nothing else there. Uh, in Pyongyang, uh, which can uh, make you really happy by having a look and going around, and you say, oh, I feel happy. No, there is nothing like that because uh, 
it's tough. It's really tough. This uh, communism uh, in the North Korea is a tough one. So people are not happy there. You know, and uh, and when you see that, uh, you're not happy. So this is the place where I really struggled to find happiness within me. Yeah, this is not uh, always easy. I was happy, but uh, in a way because I made efforts to be, become happy. And uh, uh, that's one interesting thing about that. The other is... Uh, more interesting than that and it is uh, about uh, very uh, 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 as I felt very strong uh, shamanic influences uh, in uh, North Korea especially in Pyongyang so I uh, I had a, a different uh, I can uh, say uh, tell about uh, one or one case which, which is very interesting I think uh, one night, uh, while, uh, I was sleeping, uh, while well, my wife and I were sleeping. Yeah. Maybe it was, uh, two in the morning, something like that. I heard somebody walking up, uh, uh, the stairs uh, leading to our room and, uh, the, the, the screaming and the strange voices, so on. This woke me up. So I stood up to see what what was going on. But as I stood up, uh, I understood that I stood up in the astral world. This was now the astral world. Everything what is, was happening was uh, in this, uh, but very low astral world. So there are the different levels of astral, but this was very, very low. Uh, something like limbo. Yeah. And uh, this is where I found myself. It was still my flat. It was still my room. And it was still my Lola wife sleeping. And I, still saw myself sleeping there, but I was out. And uh, at that moment, somebody uh, uh, broke my uh, door and the hundreds of evil gnomes, very evil, uh, rushed into our apartment and started screaming, uh, starting uh, like uh, fighting uh, with me and uh, jumping on my wife and it's what it made sounds funny but it was not because they were very very evil and they really uh looks like they really look like those uh, terrible uh, drawings you know how they you know how they look like uh, those yeah, kind of like goblins uh, goblins exactly they're exactly like that yeah and i understood that uh, something was really wrong wrong but i managed to banish them from our apartment so they left and so on so we were safe, but the rest of the night I could not sleep, of course. And I was very curious uh, about what was going, what, what happened. And then I realized by talking to some people who might have known this subject and by research and so on, that uh, those gnomes were uh, actually, uh, uh, so to say, uh, uh, ser uh, servants of a... Uh, 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 probably of a very, very uh, uh, knowledgeable and uh, skillful uh, North Korean uh, uh, shaman. Because uh, later I discovered through some documents uh, that uh, uh, North Korean shamans, they uh, uh, help uh, Kim Il-sung and uh, the ruling party in uh, in uh, uh, North Korea with their magic powers. And sometimes uh, uh, they, uh, 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 how to say, uh, they, uh, they, they, they magic uh, is sometimes also against uh, those few foreigners who live in Pyongyang. And uh, so I think that uh, I was r randomly chosen together with the uh, many other foreigners and why now why i'm saying so it's because that uh, uh many of people i know in uh in uh, uh pyongyang uh, uh later on after they finished their duties in pyongyang they had uh, foreign friends they had some problems in their lives big problems really really big problems with uh, uh emotional problems uh with marriage uh, there were some of them got sick uh, Man, some of them, a few of them became uh, drug addicts. Uh, uh, most of them continue to have interesting life, but with extreme problems sometimes. And there was one uh, uh, friend of mine, uh, she uh, 
she was pregnant, but unfortunately, uh, she suddenly had a, a big trouble in with her pregnancy and uh, lost her child. And the other, and this I need to say, a good a good friend of mine, an American, uh, uh, just killed himself. Uh, not American, sorry, an Austra uh, the Australian uh, killed himself when uh, he was later on, two, three years later, in uh, Bangkok for in his new uh, humanitarian mission. So, so I think that all of those troubles were caused by those uh, uh, not so friendly uh, North Korean shamans. So, uh, this is uh, what I really think it, it happened. Uh, based on my uh, research of some documents and also based on my uh, communication with uh, certain spirits. Mm. Then, uh, uh, oh, wow. So, they are very, 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 very dangerous, those North Korean uh, shamans. Uh, and uh, regrettably, uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, I don't want to mention really his name now. Uh, he, uh, like seven or eight years ago, uh, he got an idea that uh, together, magicians, to fight uh, uh, Kim Jong uh, Kim Jong Il with uh, magic. Ooh, I said, okay. I mean, of course. Uh, he is very capable and he is a very powerful magician, a great person. And those group of magi uh, those people around him, they're also great people, probably also good magicians. But uh, to fight Kim Jong Il uh, with magic against such uh, uh, a great shamans, I don't. I I I I, I, I suggested him not to do that, to stop this adventure. But uh, he kept on with uh, his idea, fighting uh, with his magic, uh, Kim Jong Il. I have no idea how everything happened uh, after that. Yeah. So that's it. You know, this is a story about North Korea. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty fascinating. Um, I, I, I'm careful to ask anything else. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, I have one, one more story to tell. Oh, unfortunately, my government uh, decided to close the embassy in Pyongyang, which is a stupid mistake, because at that moment, it was in 2001, uh, there were only several embassies working there. One of the embassies was Yugoslav embassy, and uh, due to some stupid reasons, my government decided to close it down, so I kept closing it down. So we left the Pyongyang uh, too early, I think, but... Uh, 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 on that place, in that location, uh, the Mongolian embassy moved in. And uh, uh, only after maybe three months, three months later, they complained for seeing ghosts there, ghosts of pol the poltergeist activities in, the, in our embassy. And the uh, interesting thing was that they also made official remarks, or so to say, official uh, letters to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of North Korea saying, please, we want to move to another place because uh, there are ghosts in the previous uh, Yugoslav embassy, which is now ours. So it's funny, you know, like that the, a that the, uh, ghost would be mentioned in a foreign, um, so to say, uh, official uh, 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 diplomatic uh, letters sent by Mongolian embassy to the Ministry of Affairs or Foreign Affairs of North Korea. So I think that was also funny. But yeah. thinking about it, uh, I think they were right. For sure, there were some goals there. <laughs> that, that sounds right. Probably, yeah. by what I'm hearing. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. And um, we're, we're, oh, we have about a minute left on Zoom. So I'm w wondering if there's any short things you want to talk about before we, we head off this particular call. But I'd love to have yeah, think, uh, we can. Uh, it's okay. Maybe we can make a break a little, okay? Okay. That sounds great. Okay. Talk to you soon. Yes, to talk to you soon. Okay.